For better or for worse, data structures and algorithms plays a big part in you potentially getting that next developer job. So in this video, we're gonna solve an intermediate leak code problem using JavaScript and working with linked lists. Now, if you think you could have solved this in a better way, let me know in the comments. So I'll have a link to this problem in the description below, but I chose this problem specifically because in my Discord, Learn, Build, Teach at learnbuildteach.com, we've been doing weekly sessions on data structures and algorithms, and we've been working with linked lists inside of JavaScript. So I figured this would be a perfect challenge for us to go through together. Now, really quickly, my answer was only faster than about 5% of overall JavaScript submissions. So if you have a way that I could speed this up and be more competitive, let me know in the comments. So we just got through with that and then uh, wanted to kind of do this on a video so that other people could benefit from it as well. So in this case, they reference two non-empty linked lists. That's what you receive as your parameters, uh, representing two non-negative integers. The digits are stored in reverse order. So this digit uh, is actually like 342, 465, et cetera. And each of their nodes contains a single digit. So in linked lists, each node has two properties, a value, which in this case is two, and then a pointer to the next node, which points to this node, which has a value of four, et cetera. And so you wanna be able to add these two numbers uh, and they give you some examples in here. So you, you have to return the uh, the results inside of a linked list that's also in a reverse order. So the answer to this was actually 807, but you're returning it as a linked list in reverse order. So you get seven and then zero and then eight. I give you a few different examples in here. Now the one, there's a few constraints that become really important. So they talk about the number of nodes in each linked list uh, is from one to a hundred. And the big call out there that I actually missed and someone in discord called this out for me is a hundred digits is more digits than a regular integer in JavaScript can hold. So this is actually a way to represent a number that's bigger than what your typical integer size, max size could be in JavaScript. And I don't know, uh, integer max size JavaScript. I don't actually know what that is off the top of my head. So you can see this has like 15 digits, maybe however many it is, 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever, significantly less than hundred. So my original thought for this was to convert each of these to an actual number, then use math and then convert that uh, resulting number to um, a linked list, which you can't do. And then for each one of the values, it's gonna be a number zero through nine, which is probably what you'd expect. And then you're guaranteed that the list represents a number that does not have leading zeros. So basically one of the things that's really important in here is you could have examples of numbers that are not the same size. Do they give us an example of that? Uh, they do. So this last one's really important where this number is, has more digits or more nodes than this number. So to be able to iterate through each item, we have to iterate through each item in each array, but we can do that at the same time. So let's start with just iterating through one of these. So let's say we have, um, we want to get a reference to L1 and we'll call this current uh, one. So that's as we iterate through, we'll update that. And we want to say while uh, current uh, one, so while there is a node at current dot one to just do basic iteration, we would say current one equals current one dot next. And so the thing uh, that they show up here is the definition for each list node is that it has two properties of val and a next property. So in this case, we could like, log out current one dot val, for example, just to show that and then iterate through to current one dot next. As we get to the last element and we come back through the while loop, that thing will be null and it takes a null value as default if you don't pass in um, a next property. And then also you get a default value of zero if you don't pass in a uh, value for that. So that's how we iterate through one, but we actually wanna iterate through two. So we wanna continue to iterate through both of these to a certain extent while either current one or current two are uh, are available to us. So we can do the same thing with current two and, and assign this to current two. And then we'll also just kind of duplicate this line and say, we're gonna update current two as we iterate through and we don't need this log for the value yet. Now the problem is though, we don't wanna update to the next of either one of these if it doesn't have a next. So what we can do in here is just check uh, if current one, so that same kind of check, then we'll update current one. So we can do this. And then if current two, we'll update it. So this way, if we look at one of these examples, we'll continue to iterate. So the first 
first item here, the first item here, and then go to the next one, next one, next one, next one, next one, next one. This will then stay. We won't iterate through that anymore. And then we'll go through the last three digits here, which is pretty nice. Uh, so we have kind of our iteration to get through each one. And then we want to keep track of uh, some sort of uh, return value. And so I'm going to call this head and we'll just set this basically to nothing. And then I also want to set the current new node. So for each one of these iterations, we're going to create a new node and add it to our head. So first of all, if we don't have, if we don't have a head, we want to update head to be a new node. And we also want to update the current new node to be a new node as well. So where do we get that new node? Well, we can say the new node equals a new list node. And then what's the value that we pass in here? So we want to get the value from the addition of these two values. So we could, in theory, you would think take like current one dot value plus current two dot value. But remember, one of those might be uh, null. We might be at the end of one of those lists. So what we can do is we can start with a sum and uh, call this uh, zero. And then if we have a current one node, we can say sum plus equals current one dot val. And then same thing down here with current two dot val. So now we're keeping a sum of these two things and we can use that to create our new list node. And we can say that uh, the head is going to point to the new node. And then also the current new node is going to point to this new node as well. Okay, so if we haven't set the head to start, we'll set the head and we'll set the current new node to this new node and then we'll kind of be done. Otherwise, if the head has already been set, so we're past the first element, we want to take our current new node, current new node, and set the next property to our new node. Maybe current new node isn't a very good name. Maybe we should update this to most recent new node or something like that. I'm not sure what the exact best answer is there, but we can update this to just differentiate it between the new node that we just created. So we have the most recent new node, or maybe the previous new node is maybe better. Let's actually do that. Naming is one of the tough things, toughest things we do in programming. So we have the previous new node and the new node. So we initialize these two if we haven't already. And then if the if we've already iterated through once and we already have a previous new node, let's set its next property to this new node and then set previous new node to be the now new node. So this will be dot next or it could point to new node because those will actually be the same thing. So in this case, we're adding these elements uh, to our list progressively as we walk through. The good thing about keeping track of head is we can return the head at the end of this and not have to do any additional math. Now, the thing we're not accounting for though is carryover. So let's say like in the middle here, six and four gives you 10. So what do we do with that carryover? So originally I had uh, had something like this. So just the carry and set that to zero. And then inside of here, we can take our sum and we can add on that carry. So whatever the previous carry is, we add it on here. And then I was going to say that carry now becomes uh, basically if our sum is greater than 10, we can do a ternary operator in here. So if that sum is greater than 10, then our carry becomes one. Otherwise, it becomes zero. And this is actually uh, greater than equal to so that if it's 10, we still have our carry. And then our sum then becomes uh, something similar. So if our sum is greater than or equal to 10, uh, if that is true, we want to set sum to sum minus 10, or we set it to just regular sum. So this is, we could also use the sum like uh, mod 10, for example, we could do that. In this case, we could just subtract 10. So if our sum is greater than 10, we add, uh, we update our new carry and then we uh, update our current sum that we're working with 
to either be that sum minus 10, so we get the single digit, or we just leave it as sum and add that to our new node. Now there is one interesting use case of this, and maybe pause a second and, and think about um, if there's something that we're missing, so you can pause and take as long as you want, but there is one idea here that only becomes a problem in this last example. So on this last problem or last example, because we are carrying over the one over and over again, we actually not only iterate through each one of these items to get these items, we then lastly have a carryover to add another uh, new item to this. So one of the things that I saw, and I didn't find this until looking at uh, examples, was the idea of kind of getting rid of the carry, maintaining sum in here. So we'll say sum is gonna start at zero. And then we are gonna continue to iterate while there is a sum. So basically um, sum is one, for example. So that's gonna kind of represent our carryover. And so inside of here, we'll iterate through, we'll update sum with the current value, we'll update sum with the current value. We don't have to add on a carry at this point. We can kind of get rid of a couple of these things in here. And what we'll add to this, we'll add to this new node a sum of mod 10. So mod 10 is gonna give us that remainder. And then sum will become basically a math.floor. of sum divided by 10. So this will basically give us a zero or one to carry over. And so this will basically give us our carryover that will go into the next iteration. Now this is the first time kind of live coding that because I didn't do this in my original solution, but I figured it'd be worth a try. So I think we might be close in here. Let's give this a run and see what the results say. Line 24 has an error. So sum plus equals current one dot val. Ah, that's because we need to do the sum before we actually move on to the next one. You probably already caught this earlier. So we get that val before we move on to the next iteration. So we should have done that addition first and not after. Let me know in the comments if you already caught that. And it looks like this actually uh, worked, which is pretty neat. So. Um, this was an interesting thing that I found in another solution of just keeping the sum and then combining it with the carryover. I actually like having a separate variable for the carry because I think that is, I think it's a little bit easier to digest because this sum now is representing both the sum and the carryover because it will be set to one or zero here, which then in this loop is basically uh, used as a carryover to start. And then we add on the two different values here and then mod that with 10. So anyway, that's a quick solution to a uh, linked list problem. This is intermediate on leak code. If you'd like to see more of these challenges explained, let me know. And then also we do weekly versions of this on Thursdays inside of our learn, build, teach discord. So if you're interested in participating in one of those, check that out at learnbuildteach.com where you can join us and then see these live and kind of talk through and brainstorm this along the way. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.